ISOs for the Brotherhood 2.0. Um, I get a lot of contention on this one, so I'm looking forward to reading the comment section. Uh, I'm going to put this disclaimer out here now. I don't think that I'm using the absolute pinnacle best, but I do think that most people think the absolute pinnacle best is way better than it actually is. So let's go into it, let's talk about it, and determine what uh, I use, why I use them this way, and what the other options are. So for Juggernaut, Juggernaut's real simple, right? Juggernaut uh, is big, bad booty daddy who does damage, so because of that, we want damage on him. Now we choose what form of damage. Let's see, uh, this attack doesn't hurt anybody, this attack hurts everybody that's together once, this attack hurts one person. For that, I want base damage. You know, I want the ability to charge and get an extra attack in if they're vulnerable. I want, um, I don't really care about the crit. Crits are great, but I don't care about that. I just want more across the board damage for Juggernaut. Um, I think you can justify healer on Juggernaut because he has a pretty decent health pool, but I don't think it's great. I think you can justify Fortifier on him. I don't think it's great. Juggernaut on the Brotherhood team is not a tank. He is a damage dealer that temporarily prevents other characters from dying, much like Blob. So you don't want him to build like a tank. You want him to build like damage. I think you can justify Raider on him. I don't think Skirmisher is anywhere near necessary for this guy. So that's pretty much it for that kit. Moving to uh, Blob, same kind of thing as Juggernaut. Blob hits. Blob has counterattacks. Uh, Blob does giant AoE damage, so you have your choice. Do you want giant AoE damage to come from, uh, you know, Blob's abilities uh, for crit, or do you want sustained damage over time uh, and the ability to get extra attacks in or sit on people's faces for assassinations? Uh, that's Blob. Blob sits on people's faces. So I like damage on him. I like the ability to just do a little bit more. Plus, it helps in a couple of matchups having a higher damage stat on Blob than other characters, especially, like, the uh, the mercs fight in war does that matter not really overall any damage on blob is right uh he does do a lot of multi hits so raider is very reasonable on him um but to each their own now we move to magneto now i have raider on magneto because 90 percent of the time when i'm using magneto i go whoop whoop and everyone goes together i think you know that that's magnetic vortex uh, in war, against, like, most fights, obviously the rule of thumb for war is, if it's boosted, if they're gonna block, crit doesn't matter. But at the exact same time, um, I actually don't, like, use the blind on turn one in war with Magneto. I tend to use Polarized Beam a lot. Because of that, uh, and uh, its ability to crit or not crit, and remove buffs on targets and put the abilities. Uh, Magnetic Vortex actually ends up coming later. So because of how this team works out in certain fights, it doesn't come up. But in fights where I do use Magneto, like uh, off the top of my head, any PvP fight um, in general, uh, Magneto is clearly better to be a raider because all of his attacks except one are multi-hits, Magnetic Force and Magnetic Vortex. Situationally, Against specific attacks, you might make an argument that says, well, he's not going to crit, so therefore something else has to happen. And I support situational awareness. And unfortunately, not everybody is always in those situations. So I'm not going to make content for some people. I'm going to make content for all people and give them the information. So uh, Magneto, uh, clearly Raider is the best choice on him situationally you would probably want something like Skirmisher to be able to clear off a little bit of extra buffs. Um, that's pretty much it. You don't want necessarily like have Fortifier or Healer on him. And pure damage on its own is not very relevant because he doesn't do much damage, so getting multiple attacks is not relevant. His Magnetic Force doesn't do anything but damage anyway, so it's not like you get a cool ability out of it. So Raider, number one. Skirmisher, number two. Situational. Moving to Toad, it's like 100% Skirmisher 100% of the time. <laughs> There's almost no reason to put anything but Skirmisher on him. And yes, I'm aware that some of his attacks are uh, clearing positive effects anyway. But the truth of the matter is, he's always assisting. Always. He's assisting Blob, he's assisting Magneto. Uh, because of that, Skirmisher is huge because it's constantly putting or removing buffs off of other characters that are targeted. So it's really cool to have this other character with assist now who's going to go in and just be like, no, 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 get rid of that buff. 
uh, especially in a lot of the fights. So Toad is like skirmisher across the board. You can again make arguments for other things. Like you could say, well, Toad works really well with Raider because he hits a lot of people, which is totally reasonable and true. Um, same rules as anything else, though. Like, does he is his crits going to matter against Deflex or whatever on the lines? That's up to you to decide. Uh, I think Skirmisher is the highest overall impact on Toad, and I think a lot of people agree. Uh, and moving to the end of Pyro, this is another one I get a lot of pushback on, but Tony, Pyro hits everybody, and therefore crit is the best. Um, yes, in a vacuum that is true. Uh, assuming all things are equal uh, in a perfect world, uh, Pyro having Raider would be the best, because it has the highest probability of you hitting multiple targets and critting multiple targets and putting vulnerables. The issue is, that's not the world we live in. By the time Pyro goes, there still might be some number of, for war anyway, there still might be some number of blocks. You might not choose to use specific ability A, like I don't know if you remember how to beat the old BKT, but you, you never use the special on turn one, you use the basic and then use the special later after they put the death proofs or the immunities or whatever, whatever, whatever your teams tend to do. So while, uh, again, if you are not using Magneto's pull on turn one, then it stands to reason that you're not taking advantage of the crit from Pyro. If you are using Magneto's pull on turn one, it stands to reason that Pyro's crit will be blocked by multiple different things. It really depends on how the order of timing goes, who gets hit. If, if somebody one ticks Pyro for a little bit of damage and his turn meter goes up, it's hard to predict. What I will tell you is that Pyro's damage comes in the form of bleed stacks. And the higher um, your damage stat is, the more the bleed stack damage does. Clearly, it also affected by the, uh, the level of the ability, but in general. So while crit literally will not make him do more damage at all crit will potentially put uh, vulnerable stacks on the other characters that alone might be enough if it can put vulnerable stacks in run the numbers do the math i'm not going to do it here but it's very easy to figure out what are the odds of you critting against five people with a 25 percent crit chance up to a 30 percent crit chance Versus the odds of you just hitting them and then determine which one does more damage. The bleed stacks. The truth of the matter is, consistently speaking, damage is king. Crit is not. Even with the vulnerable potential. But it doesn't matter. Both are good options. Raider is a good option on him. In a blank vacuum world, Raider is right. But in a world where you have Raider on Magneto... He doesn't need the Raider for more vulnerable stacks because it doesn't matter, so you'd rather just hit multiple targets with either additional bleed stacks or fire machine gun down one character. So I like uh, Striker on him. I think Skirmisher is completely unnecessary on him. I think Skirmisher is handled by Toad completely. Uh, I don't think he needs survivability, but if he does, Fortifier does make sense. I like Striker. I think Raider is a very good secondary option. And the truth of the matter is, if you think... I'm wrong and Raider's it, just put Raider on. If you think I'm right and this is it, put this on. I don't think it's going to hurt you in the long run to have one or the other because the Brotherhood 2.0 is such a powerful team that it really doesn't make a difference if you make a small clerical error. Like, it's not going to cost you the game overall. Again, I have a 57k Pyro. You know, I've never felt the need to invest more into him. The Brotherhood does what they're supposed to do for me. So, for that... It's pretty much everything as far as the Brotherhood 2.0 is concerned. They are an amazing team. Uh, the ISO 8s are pretty obvious on them. And again, if you like Raider, if you like Skirmisher, if you like damage on any particular character, go ahead. It's really This is really just about identifying damage dealer, damage dealer, control character, control character, control character. You know, and then when you determine where they line up, you just put the ISO weights that make sense. Hopefully that was helpful, and feel free to yell at me in the comments for not putting Raider on Pyro or whatever you want to yell at me at. I'll be sure to read those and cry myself to sleep at night. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.